So if you don't have third row seats, this will not apply to you. So what we gotta do is take this trim off, take this off, that off, and all of the back trim, everything, off so that we can take this rail off. Once we take these rails off, then we can take this piece of trim off. Then once everything is out, we'll be exposed to the rear shock top mount bolts. T50. Apparently on that side, the, the uh, whoever worked on it before damaged in uh, one of the fasteners, which is hidden behind the grip here. This grip, as you can see, is a soft piece of rubber. You just pry it. It's pretty flexible. You pry it and twist it up there. And then that will reveal a, uh, I don't know what that is, but uh, I'm gonna go get the uh, thing. But uh, yeah, it's a Torx. That's a T20. Uh, and then this is the broken side of the um, trim piece on the driver's side. Got the left side to taken out. Um, we've taken this six mil hex out of here and all the other ones that you see there these guys here are not six mil but they're torx they're t40 so next thing we got to do is start taking these pieces out here Okay, so I didn't take that back trim out yet, which I will, but I did manage to wiggle this free and then there's another, there's another tab here. There we go. There, right there is your thingamajig. But I gotta get that piece of trim off. these things back right away so you don't lose them. this time.
All right, on the passenger side, this won't come out because it is intertwined with uh, this cubby, and this cubby has some uh, tabs that need to be um, removed. Yep. And then I got one more here I gotta do with the other hand. All right. So I took this uh, cubby out, took the trim out here. Now this is free. As you can see, that's a whole lot of work just to get to the oh my god, get to the uh, shock. Now. We got to do the left one and uh, let me get to that and then I'll uh, move to the outside. And the three bolts on this particular call on the top mount are 16 millimeter. First one, uh, before we take any bolts off, we got to make sure there's nothing stuck to the uh, shock itself oh. Woo! there you go that's loose this is the uh, bottom mount for the shock I'm gonna use the big boy impact with the 21 mil Penetrant on it already, it's been soaking for 10 minutes. And there we go. So, 18. And I don't know what this is, maybe. Uh, perfect, six, I think. Yeah, I think it's a six. Yep, that is a six mil. So. Uh Now when I take this off, I'm going to put it all in sequence. One, two, three, facing down, four, five, six, And seven. Let's see. Yeah, let's test this. <clears throat> okay. So I think the shock is, uh, yeah, do for a change. It's it's not rebounding, and it is it, apparently it is the original shock with the BMW brand on it. And the replacement shock is the socks, or if you want to pronounce it in German, socks. Let's see the comparison. First. It's harder to push down. And you can see the rebound is much quicker. Okay? So now I'm going to get all these other knickknacks and I'm going to lay them the old with the new. Now, weirdly enough, I don't I don't think this is a this 
it is. Apparently this is the BMW mount, but they've got a new one. I guess a replacement. So we'll see how that feels. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna reuse these, right? This is a new one. This is the old one facing down, see? Let's see what it looks like, the new versus the old. Now the old one doesn't look too bad, right? However, it's been squished, so it's a tiny bit thinner. I mean, I mean, I'm sure it's still usable, but you know, I'm already here, so this is firm, very firm, and this is a little bit more squishy. This is the weird thing. This is the new mount that FCP Euro sent to me. This is the part number. Uh, don't know which one is which. Uh, and it's a BMW part. You know, it's not aftermarket. So it's got the BMW logo, but it looks much more complicated. So we'll see, we'll see if that makes a difference. This is the old piece. It's just a, basically just a thin piece of metal compared to the other one with nothing else. See? And uh, it, it, it also is a BMW piece with the logo and everything. So, so I don't know what's going on. But uh, form factor wise, it's the same in terms of the uh, perimeter. Just the thickness is different. All right. So I don't know if this is going to make a difference. So then we move on to the old, one of the old things. Again, doesn't look too bad. But look how thick this is. See? So, and I just took this shim here, this, uh, Whatever the fuck you call this thing, doll, and uh, put it in here. And then we reuse, of course, the dust cap and the uh, boot. Okay, <laughs> this is also weird too. You look at this; they're both BMW. Well, it might be this aftermarket, but anyways, they have the same part number. Okay, yeah, that's BMW. They're both BMW part numbers. And it's the same part number. Let's see, 7831-5616. 7831-5616. But you can see clearly the old one is longer. See? So I don't know what the deal is, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. And then we've got the shock. So now I'm going to assemble it in that sequence let me explain to you what you're going to need to be aware of because these are different uh updated parts or uh i don't know why they're different but okay as you can see the shock has now been um assembled and uh does not look like the original which is this thing so here's the difference On the original, you've got your bump stop there, that big long thing, which is inside that boot, okay? Imagine there's a boot there, okay? Then, after the bump stop and the boot, so the boot is over like that, so you can't see it, then you put this thing on, okay? So, here, right? Like so. But, you need to make sure that this dowel is in here and flush like that. And that will go there, right? So you've got your dust cap and then this is the dust cap. And then this goes over the dust cap. And there's a piece of metal here that, that this sponge is uh, resting on. And this dowel keeps it from vibrating wiggling around okay then this thing comes in this plate comes in and the dowel fits exactly 
Well, actually, the dowel keeps this from vibrating here. And then this rubber part here fits into this hole, like so. Like that. See? Right? So now, that's a cushion. It's like it's vibrating and that foam is preventing noise, right? Then, this guy here fits in the dowel opposite, like that. See this dowel here? It'll fit in this hole. So then you've got a half of the hole on the bottom and half on the top filled in with this collar, like so, okay? See how that's sticking out like that? Then, this little washer here goes on top, and then finally, the nut, okay? Now, as you can see, that's a lot of parts. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of uh, chance for vibration. And I think they improved on it with this guy here. And that's why it looks like that. And this uh, makes one solid mono piece what was a whole bunch of little pieces. Like all these things here, right here is now contained in the top part here, right? So if you look in the new piece, there's a dowel stuck in it and there's super powerful rubber around it such that, take this off. When you, uh, this still has to be on there, okay? When you put this in, the dowel already is in there okay so you would take this dowel out and you would still use this piece like so put it in there see now it's it's seated and this perimeter is the same as the dowel inside the new shock mount boom like that and that is the new design okay you can see here that's what it looks like now before i had tried to put uh i tried to put this guy this guy here i'd try to put it together with the dowel, right? So I, I tried this, but that was incorrect. You see how this dowel sticking out? It's wrong. And what happened was I put it on like that and this bolt barely made it through the collar. And so, so as you can see the new bolt, let me show you what that looks like here. This is the brand new bolt and it's stripped now. See, that's totally useless now because it could only get to half the bottom half due to me trying to put that dowel in which didn't belong now without the dowel it, it seats fine and I can tighten it and uh, I'm not gonna try to tighten it any more than this uh, because um, I don't want to compress the, the rubber stuff too much Let's talk about how I put this sucker back in there. Um, first, I hand tightened that bottom one. Then uh, it was really far away from the surface. So I got my jack and I custom cut this for an Audi. But uh, anyways, I put this here, you know, and I jacked it up like so. Kept jacking it up and sticking my finger in there to feel where the hole was. And uh, visually, you know, there's two nearby um, bolts and one far bolt. So I just memorized the uh, configuration of the bolt holes and I twisted tentatively to match. Then I jacked this up slowly and I felt one of the holes and just kept doing it and then I got one of the holes in. I think it was the inside hole 
once the inside hole was in the outside holes are a little almost in and so i jacked it up a little bit more not too tight and i wiggled it until it plunk you know came in there i had to go back and forth inside and out just to see what the hell was going on visually and then i put the 16 millimeter bolt there and then once i did that i started tightening that bolt and then this went through enough so that i could put the bolts on here and now this is what it looks like the new piece and the old piece is this little pieces one two three and little washer and all that so uh i think uh, i think i'm gonna like this new piece uh less things to potentially vibrate you know so anyways i'm gonna get on this tomorrow evening because it is getting late and uh it is 90 degrees in the texas weather and i'm gonna get dehydrated so i'm gonna stop for now